From the start, I want to let you know that these are C-sharp events, not Unity events. These do, however, still have a huge purpose. Events are commonly used when you want to be notified that something occurs without having to monitor the circumstances continuously. In my example, I'm going to have a timer that counts down, and when it hits zero, I'm going to move an object randomly from its position. I have two scripts. I have the countdown and the move object. Both of these are on a cube in my scene. Right away, I'm going to reset the timer. So I'm going to make a method for that real quick. Private void reset timer. And you don't have to follow along with this on your end. It's going to be pretty quick and self-explanatory. So I'm going to do reset timer. I'm going to call that method, which this will just do timer equals timer duration. Now I want to count the timer down every frame. So I'm going to do timer minus equals time dot delta time. So it's just going to remove however much time has passed since the last frame. And I want to do if timer less than or equals 0f perform actions. And the actions I'm going to perform is dispatching an event. So I have to add an event up here. It's going to be public event event handler. And you'll need the system namespace to use this. I'm going to call it on timer zero. You can name yours whatever you like, but typically they do lead with the word on. Now I'm going to go back down to update where I will reset timer. And then I'm going to dispatch my event. I'm going to type in the event name followed by question mark period invoke. And I'm going to pass in this, which is the object. It could be the script uh, game object. It doesn't really matter in this instance. And I'm going to do event args for arguments dot empty. Now if you are using a different scripting runtime other than 4x or higher, you're probably going to have an error down here telling you that you can't use the question mark dot period invoke option. If that's the case, you can try switching over to the scripting 4x runtime. That's under your player settings. I already have mine changed over, but it's right here, scripting runtime version. You have the option between 3.5 and 4x, at least at the time of this video going back to my script. If some reason you cannot switch over, there's another option. You can do if on timer zero doesn't equal null. This basically means if there's something listening to it. On timer zero dot invoke and again this event args dot empty. And I'm going to save and then go over to my move object script. I'm gonna make a field for countdown, which is the countdown script, and I'm going to call it underscore countdown. It's just going to be a reference to that script. Under awake, I'm going to grab that reference real quick. And now I need to subscribe and unsubscribe to the event. So what that means, it could also be called listening, by the way, uh, but what that essentially means is that you're listening for the event to fire so you want to know when it goes off and when you stop listening or unsubscribe to it you'll no longer receive those notifications when it happens. It's pretty important that you unsubscribe when you no longer need to access the event. An example of this might be if your unit dies but the game object isn't destroyed, maybe you're using a pooling system, you don't want actions to happen when the unit's dead so you would unsubscribe maybe on disable. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to subscribe on enable and unsubscribe on disable. Also worth noting that the object which holds the event, so the countdown script has my event, whichever object which has that script, if it's destroyed, all the listeners lose their communication as well. You don't necessarily have to stop listening when the event object is destroyed. Although I would recommend trying to manage that best as possible. Now to begin listening, I'm going to do private void on enable. I'm going to do countdown on, whoops, dot on to get the event name. I'm going to do space plus equal and then press tab once. And uh, you might get this window. I usually just ignore it, but you can hit apply. It just basically gives it the naming convention. It would um, alter it so that it fits modern standards. 
not a necessity though. So you can see that it created a new method. This is what's called whenever the event is dispatched. And to stop listening, I'm just going to copy this line here and do private void on disable, paste the line, remove the plus sign and put a minus sign. So those are the key differences. Plus equals means you're going to listen to it. Minus equals means you're going to stop listening. You don't really want to subscribe more than once because if you do, you'll get the event trigger multiple times. And when I say you don't want to subscribe more than once, I mean per script. You can have as many scripts or objects as you like subscribe to the event. And to quickly move my cube, I'm just going to do transform.position equals random.inside unit sphere. Now I'm going to save my scripts and then go back to Unity and hit play. As you can see, QB here has on the countdown script and the move object script. Disregard that capsule, that's from something else. And as you can see, it's moving approximately every three seconds, which is how frequently the countdown is going off. So just like that, you can know when something happens without having to continually monitor a variable. And it's also very efficient. You can also pass data into events. I'm going to show you how to do that as well. So I'm going to go back to my script here and I need to make a way to pass data in. So I'm going to go over to countdown. I'm going to make a new class which will hold the data being passed over to the listener or in this case move object. I'm going to call it public class countdown event args and you can name it whatever you want. I'm just trying to keep it simple. It does have to inherit the event args uh, class though. And I'm gonna have a public int, I'm gonna call it, actually I'm gonna make it read only int. And I'm gonna call it played times. And I'm gonna make a constructor. And I do know that there are hotkeys for this, uh, but I'm just typing it out because depending on what editor you're using, the hotkeys may not work. And then in here, I'm gonna set played times equals played time and well um, that should probably be an S on the end for consistency reasons okay now to enable arguments inside your event you have to go to where you declare your event and then at the end of event handler just toss in the name of your arguments class right away you should notice that I have an error here this is a typical conversion error. It's just telling me I can't pass in event args empty in place and replacement of countdown event args. So you have to pass in what it expects. Now I want to pass in an integer of how many times the timer has hit zero. So I'm going to add a field up here. I'm going to call it private int played times equals zero. And then under my update, whenever the timer reaches zero, I'm going to do play times plus plus just to increase it by one. And then I'm going to go back down to my dispatcher where I will do new countdown event args and I'll pass in played times. I'm going to go ahead and save this script and then go back to move object. Now you notice it still says system dot event args. However, it should be using the countdown event args and it's not going to throw an error. So if you change your listener structure or parameters, make sure you pay attention to that and update them appropriately. So I'm gonna do countdown event args E. And I'm just gonna add some debug print, which will print E, which is essentially the class that's being passed in, dot played times. I'm going to save my scripts and then go back to the engine where I will bring up console and hit play and you'll see every time the cube moves the count goes up one as expected and even though I have these scripts on the same object you don't have to do it that way uh, you could have your listeners be on any object in the scene uh, it doesn't necessarily have to keep a reference of the object either it just has to listen and remove the listener when appropriate. As always, if you have any questions, please leave something in the comments and I will certainly get back to you when I can.